Let's bring in Trudy McIntosh. Trudy, the document, tall, mm. 29 pages of it from the Solicitor General mm. has just dropped in the last few minutes. Take us through what we know so far. Yeah, Ash, we've just had a couple of minutes to skim through this 29 pages of legal advice from the Solicitor General, Stephen Donoghue. It went to the full Albanese Cabinet this morning. Now, it was looking and it lays out the timeline in terms of the Morrison Ministries on what um, constitutional um, line this was actually done, the process of this. But it goes on to say that, yes, Scott Morrison was valid in the question of administering the power over the resources and industry department. This is the crucial question of was that legal? Legal for him to be actually administering that. The reason why that's so central here is we know that he did make a decision in that portfolio to overrule the PEP 11 gas project. Um, it says there is no statutory requirement in this uh, legal brief here for this to have ever been disclosed, that uh, that didn't need to be gazetted is the word here, that there was no obligation uh, to publish this to the Australian people or gazette it. They said that it was not consistent, though crucially, the Solicitor General says that it was not consistent with the principle of responsible government for Scott Morrison not to have informed the other ministers responsible for industry, resources and energy to not be told that this power was there. The Solicitor General also lays out a series of changes that he believes should be made to prevent this from happening in the first place. He suggests that um, they should alter the ministry list so that we do have transparency over who's responsible for administering departments. He said there could potentially should be a change to the gazetting process so uh, to ensure that this actually has to be published if it ever were to happen again and he goes on to say in the final page here that in order to ensure this is binding on future governments that it be changed in legislation so that this actually continues going forward we'll hear more detail from the Prime Minister Anthony Albanese very shortly here at Parliament House as for the politics of all of this ahead of time this morning the Deputy Prime Minister indicated no matter what the Solicitor General found to Today, that there should be political consequences for Mr Morrison. Exactly what they should be remains unclear. Whatever the legality of this is, um, the, 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 the political consequence of this should be severe uh, because what Scott Morrison has done is undermined the Westminster system of government and in the process he has treated the Australian people with complete contempt. When you say that the consequence should be severe, what do you mean by that? Well I, well, I actually think that it's a good question. I think ultimately it's a question for the Liberal Party. I mean, <clears throat> they, that's, that, they were the government. The top line summary out of the Solicitor General's advice here was that, yes, Scott Morrison was acting within the law when he had um, appointed himself to have these powers, but it goes on to say here, and I'll quote from the advice, the end result was to the extent that the public and the parliament were not informed of the appointments, that the principles of responsible government are fundamentally undermined. So that is what we're going to hear, Ash, today, that, yes, Scott Morrison technically acted within the rules, but the conventions of transparency and informing the parliament and the people were undermined, according to the Solicitor General. Trudy McIntosh, live in Canberra. Thank you. And you can see that live shot there, the Prime Minister, due to speak any moment now. Let's bring in our political editor now, Andrew Clennell, who has also been trying to get through these 29 pages since it dropped in the last few minutes. Andrew, as Trudy was taking us across there, essentially when it comes to the legality of this issue, it looks like Scott Morrison is out of the woods. But the Solicitor General clearly unimpressed, saying that uh, essentially, uh, in his opinion, it was not consistent with responsible government. Yeah, it's as we expected, Ash, and he's suggesting changes in relation to it. Uh, he's suggesting that perhaps a legislation occur, a statutory change, so that a Prime Minister would have to declare when Ministers are sworn into various departments. So I'll read from it. It, it actually examines the case of Scott Morrison uh, swearing himself into Keith Pitt's portfolio, Industry, Science, Energy and Resources, on the uh, 15th of April 2021. It says, was he validly appointed to that, administer that, Answer, yes, the Governor-General, acting on the advice of the Prime Minister, has power under Section 64 of the Constitution to appoint an existing Minister of State, including the Prime Minister, to administer an additional Department of State. The Governor-General, and it clears the Governor-General here, has no discretion to refuse to accept the Prime Minister's advice in relation to such an appointment, nor is there any constitutional or legislative requirement for notification of such an appointment 
And it says he was validly appointed in April 2021. But then uh, Stephen O'Donnell here, the, the Solicitor General, goes on saying, that said, the fact that the parliament, the public and the other ministers who thereafter administered DISA, that's the department concurrently with Mr Morrison, were not informed of Mr Morrison's appointment was inconsistent with the conventions and practices that form an essential part of the system of responsible government prescribed by Chapter 2 of the Constitution. And further, he says, plainly enough, it is impossible for the Parliament to hold ministers to account for the administration of departments if it does not know which ministers are responsible for which departments. So there you have it. He, he condemns Morrison's action, but he says it's legal. That's the bottom line and suggests reform here, which I guess the Prime Minister can commit himself to today. I can't see the opposition opposing it or any crossbenchers requiring that if this ever happens again, it must be declared publicly. Yeah, you'd think that any reforms in this space would be pretty bipartisan at this point. Andrew Clonell, appreciate your analysis. Thank you.